Josh from Builder here. In this video, we're gonna show you how to set up your very own single page app design for your web applications inside of Builder. And the best part, it's completely without code. I've got a template that you can start from if you want to start from this versus apply it to something that's already existing for you. This is gonna carry over to your progressive web application and every part about what you build inside of this Builder project when you implement this setup. So before I dive into how this is set up, let's talk about what a single page application is. Basically, it's the design that at this point, most users kind of expect in their applications. It means when I'm navigating an app and even though I'm going to functionally a different page or a different piece of that particular application, I'm not refreshing the page entirely. I'm not going to a brand new URL. It's going to a white screen for a split moment while it loads the next screen. It's a single page design. It feels more like I'm using software and an app as opposed to going on a step-by-step -step web journey through different pages. And so it's a really key part of really great application design in most use cases. To demo this, I've got this project brought up where as you can see, I'm navigating from my tasks to team tasks, to projects, to our dashboard. And I'm not refreshing the page to feel like I'm moving page to page inside of the application. It's just loading up the new page that I need. The other thing that you'll notice is that the URL is changing as well while I do this. And so I can still have a URL that is targeting a specific part of the application. And this can be carried forward into even deeper linking if you want to have a page for a specific task or a specific comment even, you could target all the way down into a specific part with this URL structure that we have here. And by updating this actual URL path, we're able to leverage the browsers back and forward buttons as well. So the user kind of expects to be able to go back and forward. And if we weren't updating this URL, we wouldn't be able to have also that experience of the browser back forward buttons that users kind of expect too. So this is what we mean when we say single page application design. It's everything about your software, your app that you're building in one URL so that your user gets that really top notch experience. So let's go ahead and dive into the done template here. The done template, if you don't know, is a builder template available to all of our users. It's a task project and team management platform. Now, I just jumped into the Builder Studio here for the done template. The most important thing initially to talk about when setting up your single page app design is simply choosing the URL for your application. That's a fairly straightforward process. In Builder, all you do is go to project, click on that, go to URL routes, and then you're gonna be able to create a new URL route or I already have this on our forward slash app URL. So I'm gonna click that and show you one quick thing on my authenticated page, so when a user is authenticated and signed in, I'm gonna to go to the app home page. If they're not authenticated, I'm gonna send them to the sign in sign up page. So this is just logic that happens on the server whenever someone requests forward slash app. If Builder sees that they're not logged in, we're gonna send them here instead of sending them to this page. That's just the first step, choosing your actual URL. And so everything that says forward slash app, Builder's gonna take that and say, I want you to go to one of those two pages based off of you being an authenticated user or a non-authenticated user. So this is that sign in, sign up. This is our app home. So now on our app home, you can see in the studio when we're developing this, we've got the left-hand menu here that we see in our application right here. But in our application publicly, we have like all the content. We have what I'm expecting to interact with as a user. But in the Builder Studio, we've set it up so that this is just basically a blank box. It's waiting for content based off of some sort of logic. And to show you this, if we go over here on the left-hand side, we have our element tree of all the elements on our app homepage. Under sidebar and, and main, this is basically the whole view of the application. It is the menu and it is the actual content div as well. So sidebar is our menu in this case. I could do a top menu and it actually switches to a top menu on mobile in this case. And then I also have our main div and this is actually where we have a container called a component right here. It doesn't have to be a component. You can open up content like a page inside a builder into any div that exists. So you don't have to target a component. I like to use it. It's like a visual signal for me. 
to say this is a spot where I send pages to be opened into, but it's totally preference. So I've got my main here, and this is ultimately the page that I'm actually opening up my content into. If you want to see that content, we'll just zoom out a little bit, and you'll see in our workspace, we've got our app home and sign up, and then we've got little sections that we're looking at and be able to view, manage, and build all of the pages of our application from my to-dos to dashboard to status management. All of these are built right here and fairly easily organized so that we can manage it. Let's look at what actually happens to make this single page architecture work. The first step is what happens when we load at the page? Well, one thing that we want to do is compare and look at the value in the URL, the request that was given by the user. Is there a specific page that we want to open? And so I'm going to run this flow in the page load flow that runs every time a page is loaded in, inside a builder, whether that's a URL page or a page that gets opened up inside of your single page application. So it's not just on page load of the URL route, it's on page load of that specific page, which is really important later on as we talk about how tasks work, dashboards work, all that. Those are things that run as soon as those pages open up. And so on the page load of the initial app home though, we're checking the URL of the current request for the value in segment number one. Important thing in programming development Usually, when you talk about a sequence of values, zero is actually a value. It's actually the first thing in the request. So in our case, when we're looking at our app homepage, I've got forward slash app, that's zero. That's my segment zero. And then I've got this right here, forward slash something else. That's my segment number one. So what I'm doing in this logic is I'm saying, let's look at what's in segment number one. And based off what's there, let's open up a specific part of the application into our container for the expected experience of our user so that our URL route can still produce a very specific part of the application. I'm not just limited to an app homepage when the users visit my app. So I'm looking for things like dashboard, my tasks, team tasks. These obviously in many cases will align with your menu. So what are the actual segments of your app? And so you're going to have your forward slash match those potential uh, segments of your application so that those links go to the appropriate areas. So I'm checking all of that information. And based off of what the value is, if it's matching something specifically, I'm going to open up the appropriate container. Or I also have logic to set if there is no match. So let's say they typed in something that didn't make sense, or more than likely, they just navigated to the app and there was no specific destination. We're going to just open dashboard is our default. So if no value is valid, just open the dashboard. So that's our home page. And so let's just go ahead and quickly look. We'll come back to this number two option here, listener set for check. But when we select our open dashboard here, what we're doing is we're opening our dashboard page into the container that we talked about. So into our container right here, we're going to open our dashboard page into it. And so that dashboard page, if we scroll all the way to the right here, dashboards right here, we're going to open up this page into that container and load it on the screen for our user to see. And that's what we see whenever we load up our application. Let me just delete this, hit enter again. We load up the app and we're on our dashboard right away because we didn't have a request. The next thing that we do is a lot of recycling of logic and steps that we're going to use, for instance, whenever we click a menu option. We want to deselect all of the other menu options so they don't look like they're the active one anymore. And then we want to reselect the one that we just selected. And so that's what you're seeing here is a global deselect all menu items that we run every time we change what menu option we've selected. And then we reselect the new one that we have, which is simply adding a menu item style class selected. And we also have this nested collapse mobile menu. And this is a simple thing that on desktop, it doesn't do anything, but when you're on mobile, if you've got a menu open and you click on a menu to open up, you don't want that menu to stay open. You want the menu to collapse, and then you want to see the content get loaded into the screen. This is a way where we just run collapse mobile menu every time someone clicks a menu item to collapse it on mobile, specifically great whenever we're using this on progressive web apps and installing it to a user's device. So. 
that's what's creating that experience of a dashboard loading up. Now, let's say I wanted to load a specific URL, team tasks. I'm gonna load it up. Team tasks is typed in. Our logic sees that as we load the page and we load the team task page instead of the dashboard. And if it's empty for the final step, again, if it's empty, we think it's the dashboard and we just go ahead and go right there. So fairly simple on page load, check to see what's in segment one, depending on what's there, load this specific page into it. Now that's all great and awesome. However, there are a couple other little things that we need to do to make sure we get the full experience and benefit of a single page application. So let's go back to page load, go back to our compare values of URL on page load and look at this number two option here, listener set check. This step and this flow is actually, we're doing one small piece of logic to then set a listener on the page. And a listener is something that basically is saying, when this thing happens, I want to be looking out for that so that I can trigger something else to happen. And the thing that we're setting here that we'll set with a listener is we're gonna listen to the URL changing. So if the URL gets updated in the browser, I wanna go do something as a consequence of that. The other thing that we need to make sure is we only wanna do that once. If we set this listener up a dozen times, that same listener would be looking, see the update, and it would run a dozen times. We don't want that to happen. So a simple way to control the number of occurrences of something like that happening is whenever you set it, you can also at the same moment set a variable that becomes yes if you have set up that listener. So in this case, what I've done is I've done a listener set check. So I check the value of this variable listener set. If it equals to yes, I don't want to do anything. That's great. That means the listener's already been set. If it's not equal to yes, which means it's the first time this is run, when the page loaded up, go ahead and set the listener on the page. The first thing I do in that flow when we run it is I set listener set the variable to yes. So now I know it won't ever rerun. And then I use this action called listener URL path change state. It's basically listening for the URL in the browser that the user is currently in to change when this happens what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the flow, compare values of URL on page load. It's a circle here, it feels like a little bit, is now that we've loaded the page, we're able to check it to load the correct content based off the initial request, but we're also creating a listener so that whenever we get an update of the URL, we're able to rerun the same logic, look at the URL that's been set, and then correctly recreate the experience of opening up a new page into the application and setting up the menu appropriately. So now we've shown how we can on page load, load the specific targeted part of the application through a linking process. And again, you can take that a further step with what, what's called oftentimes deep linking. Like if I wanted to load a specific task, I could do forward slash task, forward slash the task ID or the task name. And it might be able to go to and open a specific page for that task. As you build out big applications, definitely something you might want to do and it's just a matter of adding on another layer of logic that you'd probably do when you load the task page. You would simply double check that logic as well. So the next thing that we have to do is make sure that whenever we click a new option that we want the app to change for, we need to update the URL so our listener can actually listen to it and make the changes that we need to happen. And so to do that, all we do is whenever we are interacting with a click event of one of our menu items here, I'm simply changing the browser URL. It's a simple step. All I do is change it. And I know I get to reuse the whole set of logic that our listener is running to actually change the state of the application, open up the correct content, and make sure that each menu item is styled appropriately. Small important note here, the reason that you're seeing a concatenate and the URL set up this way is because this is one constructing a whole normal URL. So HTTPS, the current subdomain, it could be www, it could be done.builder.com. Like in this case, our template is at done.builder.com or it could be something completely different like app.yourwebsite. The reason that we use a structure like this instead of saying, oh, it's just builder.com because sometimes you might have test environments uh, as you're building in the studio, as you have a test environment that's published, 
and then the actual live environment. This setup makes sure the URL change works appropriately in context for the actual system that you're in at that moment, as opposed to directly linking to, let's say, builder.com. It would error out if I'm in any environment but our production environment. So I'm using our URL path here. I'm using our concatenate input that lets me just string any number of values together into one string. So I'm combining HTTPS with subdomain dot the domain itself. Domain always includes the dot com or the dot whatever as well. So builder.com is, is included in domain when I get it from the system right here under advanced. And then I do forward slash at forward slash my tasks. So that's what I've done. I create the same logic and I create the URL that my listener is looking for to redirect it appropriately. This is also a really great process because now if you ever want to add a new menu item, you could simply clone the menu item, clone the select menu item, which one you want. And all you have to do is clone the actions and make sure the listener is just looking for that potential value and adding a new potential value to check for right here. And as soon as you do that, you've added a new potential option for your URLs to direct your application to a specific segment of your app or to really run any type of logic that you might want to. So that's everything involved in creating your very own single page application inside of Builder. If you have feedback, questions, comments, we'd love to hear about it. Please let us know in the comments if you wanna figure out maybe there's a nuance of your setup that you feel like is a little bit different. Jump into our community and in our Discord or our weekly office hours. We'd be happy to take a look at your specific project to help make sure you're getting the experience that you and your end users really want. Thanks.